good evening to you all reverences his excellency dr abdul kalam and professor peter heck and professor gunapala nanayakar dr suren batagoda dr nilanthi bandara and professor tis vitarana uh, his excellency uh, high commissioner of india mr sin distinguished invitees ladies and gentlemen it is real happiness and great honor for us to welcome your excellency to this international energy symposium as the chief guest the sri lanka and india have led lawn friendly association and we are always working on a common aim of developing our nation since independence we have recently formulated the cabinet approved sri lanka energy sector development plan for a knowledge based economy 2015 to 2025 The plan envisages a mid-term target of Sri Lanka becoming self-sufficient in energy and long-term target of meeting 100% of our energy needs through renewables. We have identified eight, eight trust areas under this plan dealing with policy, green energy, conservation, customer satisfaction, infrastructure development, good governance, innovative financing and research and development. we understand that research and development is the key to energy sector development in this background we are planning this international energy symposium on a very special theme which is on energy challenges in the knowledge economy in order to make conducive environment for our engineers and scientists to actively participate in our drive towards sustainable economic prosperity the creative ability of human being was brought about by human brain power blended together with actions of human genes this is by recursive thoughts agriculture and farming controlling fire and bioenergy exchange of goods and services similar to barter system communities and systems of governments knowledge based society is the heritage of asia asian especially south asians never achieved economic development by way of violence and dominance over other whereas on the contrary the western world was so the doctrine inherent with the religious background in asia was based on non-violence and harmony with nature through eco-friendly system which is part of our proud heritage knowledge economy based development drive is the prime move of the postmodern era we have identified five preconditions for achieving a knowledge based economy namely technological economic prosperity environmental preservation development and social equity and individual happiness when you talk about technological condition during the space of the industrial revolution which was started around 1760 manpower multiplication was the prime driving force and during the second phase from 1860 manpower was replaced by fossil fuel and fossil fuel era had begun the third phase which is called the information age started in 1960s and is still continuing we have brain power multiplication was the driving force of the development since 1980s the concept of a new green energy has surfaced and in the modern era it is the synergy between man power multiplication brain power multiplication and new green energy development in the economic front during the post imperialist period we have tried communism and capitalism or a mixture of both and since 1990 after the collapse of the soviet union everyone tried to market driven economy as their key strategy for development there are three strategy to achieve economic growth namely production factor driven investment or efficiency driven and innovation driven strategies we have passed both factor driven and investment driven phases and entering into the innovation driven phase therefore at this stage it is essential for us to evaluate our advancement in both knowledge and innovative aspects of a country ladies and gentlemen sri lanka's knowledge economy index is 3.63 and innovation index is 3.06 where for comparison purpose that of south korea are 7.97 and 8.80 respectively out of 143 countries sri lanka ranked 105th position in the global innovative index whereas we stand at 101 for the knowledge economy index this shows how much we are lagging behind compared to the rest of the world next important condition would be our environment where environmental preservation is essential for the survival of the human kind 
What is important here is to reduce the deficit between biocapacity and ecological footprint, minimizing pollution of our air, soil, water, and global warming, which is a real threat to the mere existence of the humankind. Therefore, it is essential for us to live in a harmony with the nature and to develop sustainably. What we are now require is a sustainable development in such a way that dynamic equilibrium of environment will be preserved for generations to come. Development itself is conditional, and there are various stages of development paradigms, like primordial development, where our ancestors and aborigines, especially the Vedda community, have lived without change in the environment. Next phase was coexistence development, where our ancient civilization centered on cities like Anuradhapura and Polonnaruwa can be taken as classic examples. However, in contrast, the Western development paradigm was based on an invasive principle where the humankind used to change the dynamic equilibrium of our environment, especially after the Second World War. Final condition that needs to be fulfilled for a knowledge-based economy is equity in all aspects, that is equity between individuals and communities, region, and continents. Aforementioned five conditions are essential for us to build a more sustainable and more equitable world. According to the Asian doctrine, spiritual path and the proper balance between body and mind also makes the way forward to development. In the European secular civilization context, the process of development has evolved from manpower, passed through machine power, and has now come to information and communication power. It is evident that the synergy for further development in the Western world has been emerged out of the development of humankind was achieved starting from the Industrial Revolution up to the present day. In this scenario, Asian con con continent, especially South Asia, was lagging behind the Western world for many reasons until the recent past. In contrast, in the present day contest, Indian Ocean is becoming a major hub in the new world order with many lessons to learn from countries like Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore. And the giants like China and India are now changing the Western dominant world order. Main contributing factor in the new development is the growth led by Asia, which is known to be emerging Asia. Asia is slowly and steadily becoming the prime mover and shape of the new world order. In this scenario, in this Indian Ocean will be a powerful ocean, and Sri Lanka on the middle of it has a strategic importance in all aspects. In the local context, as a country, we have reached comparable achievement in the space of education, health, life expectancy, infrastructure, women empowerment, etc. Two most important hurdles we are now facing are the energy security and middle income trap. We should strive to achieve the status of higher income country in the near future. To achieve this, we need to find our own model based on the following four pillars. Firstly, we want to achieve economic prosperity through sustainable development, not a bubble-driven economy as in the recent past. Because at the end of the day, the bubble will certainly burst, and we are experiencing it now. Secondly, we need to preserve our environment with ecological balance and biodiversity. Social equity also should play a major role, as there must be a just and equitable society, irrespective of class, creed, ethnicity, region, or race. Finally, individual happiness is what matters most. Without happiness, the human beings as a species cannot survive. These four pillars are essential for balanced economic and social prosperity of a nation. In conclusion, I fervently hope that this symposium will pave the way for a new beginning of our scientific community to assist us in, the, in this great endeavor. I thank you.